Hey, what's up everybody? Dr. Ryan Weaver here with our Spinal Workshop. I'm your host and I'm going to be diving into uh, a topic that I'm really passionate about. Uh, I know I've said that uh, a lot and I really am passionate about a lot of these, but today uh, the one that we're going to be talking about really hits Ohio here um, very um, prevalently. And this is titled The Problem and the Solution. So before we get into what this is going to entail and some of the specifics uh, here in Ohio and, and really our country, um, do me a favor, like, subscribe on our Facebook, on our YouTube channel, that way that anything that we post, um, whether it is another spinal workshop, any other fun facts, anything going on in our practice, in our office, that you will get notified of that. And again, we do these spinal workshops. Um, I firmly believe the number one thing that we can do for our patients and our community is educate them. Um, I feel like that is our job as doctors, uh, as chiropractors, as healthcare providers, is to, to educate our uh, community and our patient base. So the problem and the solution. We all know that there's a problem here in our healthcare system, you know, definitely in America. I'm really going to speak to that. Um, and it's something that we all hope for a solution when we have the problem. And sometimes we aren't really sure what that is. So we are becoming a over-medicated society, um, overly prescribed pharmaceutical drugs, and we're pushing more drugs really than ever before. Especially in America, you know, we, we are able to advertise directly um, to consumer, which you don't find that really anywhere else. And, you know, one of the things, ironically enough, I remember in grade school that we would have the, uh, the D.A.R.E. program, uh, you know, the big, lead, big red lettering, excuse me, of illegal drugs. But this one, we're talking about legal drugs that somehow we get our hands on and then how easy it is to become chemically addicted to those. So we're going to shed some light on that. Um, one of the things we're going to show is the CDC Injury Center looks at deaths and non-fatal overdoses into a few categories. Um, number one is natural opioids, number two um, synthetic opioids, and then heroin as well. Some of these you may have heard of, um, natural opioids, morphine, codeine, um, some of the synthetic opioids, tramadol and fentanyl, and then uh, heroin, which is actually an opioid that comes from morphine. So as always, I try to in involve my patients and my community. Um, and there's a cool quote from uh, ben Benjamin Franklin that tell me and I will forget teach me, and I may remember, involve me, and I learn. So I want to continue to involve you in these and look up some of these statistics. Um, these are ever, you know, ever always changing, and we try to continue to, to bring you the most accurate, up-to-date information. So if you think of some of the causes of death in our country, in America, you may hear of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes are some of the most prevalent. And when we look at how many people um, that have these, heart disease, 25.4 million, cancer, 14.7 million, and diabetes, 30.3. <clears throat> it is estimated that 30% of Americans have chronic pain. That's 116 million. That is, you total up heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, that is way more than that. And this is why we have an opioid crisis. So, history of some of the opioids. Um, and actually, if you have a chance, you have Netflix, try to find um, the, the title of the, the uh, series is called Painkiller. And that's, it's actually about the Sackler family, which I'm going to dive into here. Um, the Sackler family patented Oxycontin, which is a sister drug to heroin, by the way. Uh, it's two times stronger than morphine, and it has been known to only take about four days that you could develop an addiction to that. Um, and where this really changed in the 90s, and you heard me mentioning direct-to-consumer and marketing uh, such on TV, is that in 95, Purdue Pharmaceutical really shifted the whole culture of uh, prescribing drugs, and their tagline was the drug to start with and stay with for Oxycontin. So from tw uh, 2002 to 2017, there was a 3.1-fold increase in deaths 
and national overdose deaths involving drugs. And this is from the National Institute of Health. So with Ohio specifically, <clears throat> of every 10 Ohioan drug overdoses, eight of them were prescribed for chronic pain. This isn't okay, that eight out of 10 for something such as a musculoskeletal uh, complaint, that eight out of the 10 were given a prescription uh, drug. So another statistic in breaking this down to a category, uh, excuse me, a, a county here in Ohio, Montgomery County, in 2020, 297 people died, and in 2021, 310 from suspected and confirmed drug overdoses. So I have a recent chart here um, for 2023, and 2023 was not fully completed uh, at the time of this. And it took deaths from 2015 to 2023. Um, and when you look at in 2015, roughly 3,000 Ohioans died from a drug overdose. In 2021, this had the highest, just under 5,200. And then, uh, again, 2023 wasn't totally complete. Um, it is projected to be around 5,000 as well. So diving into this, we continue to see this upward trend in overdose deaths. So the problem, when we break this down, problem and the solution, what's our end result? The problem is chronic pain. The solution has been medication or opioids to, to kill the pain, not really fix the problem, again, just to make the pain go away. And the result that we're seeing continue to increase is deaths from an overdose. So we've got to really start taking action. We have started taking action. You're going to see a few states that I'm going to reference here in a moment who have really dug their uh, feet into the ground and started pushing back on this, um, one of which is Ohio. <clears throat> But, again, not knowing this is happening. Again, really, if you haven't watched, tune into that Netflix series and watch Painkiller um, because it's really it's sickening and to actually see how it all played out really, really takes this whole spinal workshop and, and blows it up into, uh, again, a series. So states taking action. Ohio files a lawsuit against five drug companies for aiding opioid crisis. West Virginia actually made it mandatory um, for chiropractic care uh, before prescription drugs. Uh, opioid New Hampshire um, started research on a chiropractic care utilization and less opioid use. And death rates from overdosing uh, synthetic opioids increased in 21 states. Uh, 10 states doubled from 2015 to 2016. Again, we can continue to go on and on throughout these. Um, one of the cool findings is the uh, Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine in 2018 found that people getting chiropractic adjustments are 55% less likely to have an opioid drug prescription filled. So if we immediately cut that in half, 55% is huge when we're talking about how easy it is to get addicted to these substances how a lot of these then create these drug habits, opioid drugs. Um, I heard in reference that a 30 milligram like uh, opioid is roughly $30. This was a few years ago when I heard this. But if you were used to taking five of those a day, that's $150 a day drug habit. So again, you start to see how does this all end up in illegal drugs is most people can't afford that drug habit. For probably a third of the price, you can get the same hit on something such as heroin, and then we end up in these illegal drug overdoses. So I'm going to leave you with a few things to think of that differently. If you know somebody who suffers from chronic pain, what options do they have besides uh, surgeries, besides painkillers, and how can we start to change the trend from going up and uh, synthetic drug overdoses and illegal drugs to switch that and, and reverse it back down. So an uninformed, uneducated, non-confident population is much easier to manage. These are things that you need to push back on and ask questions about. 
How is this going to help me differently? Is this a chemically addicted drug? And again, hopefully you try to find more complementary and natural ways to handle a lot of these health issues anyway. And that is, again, one of my goals is to raise up an informed, educated patient base, a community to continue to do proactive and preventative things. So in the long run, we're able to function into our older years and do everything that we want to be able to do. So I hope that you found this final workshop uh, enlightening. I hope that it opened your eyes to how real this is, especially in our area here and especially in Ohio of how can we combat these things differently? What other outlets do we have, such as chiropractic care and more holistic measures? So again, do us a favor, like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook or page here, so that these final workshops, you can continue to get updates on those, and again, more and more information. So thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you at our next final workshop. Take care. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that spinal workshop. Don't forget to like the video if you learned something and be sure to share it with somebody else who may benefit from that information discussed. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you are alerted whenever we post a video.